Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Tea Time, the podcast with Cassia Marina. And if you've been here for any length of time, you might have realized I have not been using the intro music for the podcast. And it's not to say like I've ditched it, but lately I've just been f- loving the vibe of just starting the podcast without any music. It just feels less like there's less production. It's just a raw conversation. You click play and I just start talking. And that's just the vibe and space that I'm in these days. I do love my audio and I will bring it back in. Um, But yeah, I just wanted to share, (laughs) bring some um, attention to that for some reason. So I'm just loving it. I don't know. Are you loving it? Are you just like enjoying just that raw uncut feeling of things? Anyway, so on today's podcast episode, I have guest Leslie Bradshaw, and this episode was done as a live podcast recording on Instagram, and I'm looking forward to doing a lot more of those, so without any further delay, let's just dive straight into the episode. I will introduce what the topic is all about and all of that good stuff. The topic of today is really all of this lockdown and how it's affecting us as individuals, you know, with all of these restrictions, et cetera, et cetera. And I feel like we haven't given it enough space to talk about. Everyone is just trying to put on a brave face. We're just trying to like get through it on our own. And, you know, I just went silent for a while because I wanted to be like really clear on what is the message that I want to share with people during this time right now. Because the fact is like we all would have had plans and my plans, for example, got, you know, ended st- st- dead in its tracks and I had to like figure out, OK, now is not a good time to move forward with the things that I wanted to move forward with. So I took the time to like you know, not work on that, but then you feel this sense of like being lost, like, okay, Mm -hmm. what else can I do? And then, you know, we all are relying on whatever savings we have in the bank. And then the longer we stay in this, we're trying to figure out, okay, money isn't coming in, but it's keep depleting because we're humans, we're alive, we have to live. Mm -hmm. And having to deal with responsibilities, having to look at, you know, your business on pause, especially those who can't really leverage online for whatever reason you know depending on the nature of your business I know it's really difficult to just say well hang in there or people telling you well don't complain just be grateful and I really wanted to have this episode to really validate everyone's experience and just to also let you know that you're not alone and also to be vulnerable and share that, hey, we're all going through something similar. And regardless of your situation, it's not something pleasant to go through. You know, one of the things that I have a problem with is the people who are like, well, I don't really go anywhere anyway. This isn't about going somewhere and just having a good time and if, and just going out. There's something about human nature where you might not go anywhere, but you just want to know you have the option to, you know, it does something to you mentally. And there is an effect on you as an individual when every time you try to pivot, something changes from Mm -hmm. every two to three days, there was something changing. Mm -hmm. This post-traumatic stress syndrome that can happen. And I feel like People don't pay enough attention to this. So Leslie is a life coach and mindset coach, and she wanted to give us some tips today to, you know, help us cope through this time. It might seem as though we might be coming out of this soon, but I am so jaded at this point. Like, I don't know when we would get out of this. We can only estimate. We can get promises. And, but we really don't know for sure because things are always changing. Anything can change. And that's one thing about the pandemic. So how, how do we cope during this time? So Leslie, I want to just give you space to introduce yourself and let everybody know who you are, what you do, et cetera, et cetera. The stage is yours. 
Okay, thank you so much. That's a wonderful introduction there. Um, my name is Leslie Bradshaw, for those who don't know. I am a personal empowerment and mindset coach. I help um, mostly women, some men, depending on a case by case basis. I help them to learn to identify those limiting beliefs that are holding them back from living the best life that they can, from going after their dreams and goals. I teach them to identify those limiting beliefs and how to clear them and learn how to choose the thoughts that allow them to live their best life, those self-sustaining thoughts that really support you in leveling up, in going after your goals and going after your dreams. So that's basically what I do in a nutshell. Um, I decided to reach out to you, as you know, when you sent an email to your email list about how you were feeling because of the pandemic. And it was very refreshing to read because I myself had been going through similar feelings. And as a life coach, I was feeling like, okay, a little bit of that imposter syndrome that I I'm supposed to be motivating people, <laughs> you know, uplifting people and here I am You're supposed to be like leading the way and being a beacon of hope and all of the shoulds that we we think like even myself like thinking mm -hmm. like okay people would say well now Cassia this is your time to thrive it's the digital age like lead us but you know I'm human too so absolutely continue. yeah absolutely that you're right we're human too we it's not like where you think a guru or somebody who's above everything they have transcended human <laughs> human emotions no we still have to deal with normal everyday human emotions human interactions human feelings and you know like you said all these lockdowns we've been in lockdown for what 16 months now <laughs> <laughs> yeah and here's and the thing i love that you i love that you bring that up because there's this perception that we recently went into lockdown in march and it's like no technically yeah. we have been yeah. here since the start of the pandemic since march it's just that it's different levels of restrictions mm -hmm. and i think we've been so gotten used to lockdown that we don't even realize that we're in it That's, until yeah. like it's and you can't go out and there's curfews and whatever but we have been in I heard someone phrase it intermittent lockdown which really is true it's intermittent it's like it's really severe and then it's really light but we have been in it for more than a year now yeah absolutely and it it has been even when it was at its lightest phase it has still been very restrictive because there's still a whole host of different locations where you couldn't go to you could not I think they'd never reopen cinemas even if you were eating at a restaurant you could not order alcoholic drinks right and they were only operating at 50 percent capacity so a lot of us still did not go out and do a lot of anything a lot of interacting our interactions have remained on even though online. things relaxed yeah even though things relaxed it remained online and I went to the beach one time during this entire um um process uh because and the only reason I went is because my cousin was migrating and I wanted to just have a last something with him before he left right. and you know it we went to the beach and so many people on the beach and I'm like but I understood why it was so crowded why? because that's one of the few places we were allowed to go mm -hmm. and we and we're as humans we are social by nature so when right. you tell people to essentially go against their own nature it's yeah. like yeah it, it can it, make it, you sick Mm -hmm. absolutely Literally. absolutely i mean there, there's a thing called psychosomatic illness and which which is where you mm. may have the physical manifestations of illness but it's actually driven by your psychology by your by your psyche you so you you've been stressing yourself so much 
that you're actually having physical manifestations. When that those those kinds of um illnesses happen to me, I usually get like severe runny nose, I get like a fever, and that's how my my um psychosomatic illnesses they uh, manifest themselves but other people they get joint pains and so sometimes it's not just that oh something is wrong physically you take a tablet because usually when when I get those I know it's psychosomatic because when I take medication it doesn't work mm. so I know it has nothing to do with actual physical illness it's a psychological thing so I have to work on my mind at that point but wow. Being in the this um, 15, 16 months of lockdown, it, it gets to you. It does get to you. And like I was saying, you know, being someone who's supposed to be inspiring people, and some days I just feel like I don't want to move. I don't want to get <laughs> off my bed. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to smile. I, don't want to... <laughs> I love that. So, so for me, like... The first time we went into lockdown, mm -hmm. I feel like mentally it didn't affect me the way it did now because mm -hmm. now I'm act I'm literally exhausted because Absolutely. you have you have run out of the capacity to cope. So at first for me to rationalize it's like oh well if we stay indoors for three months I don't expect us to be on lockdown for longer than six, three months maybe six months like. Because you, when you you can put like a reasonable time frame on something, it's like okay, well, the, it's 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 gonna end, yes. right? And I feel like I made so much use of 2020 to push and do this and do that, and I was like super inspired, and I was going, and things were happening. I think I pushed myself so hard that when January came, I really hit a severe level of burnout. And uh, I was really happy with the changes that I was making in my business to really create a business that was more in alignment with me and my talents and really what makes me me, right? Sometimes we build businesses around like literally like skills, but then as people, we have natural skill sets and things that make us us. And something about 2020, I had a lot of discovery that made me realize, oh, this is what makes me me or this is something that you know you notice people saying the same thing about you so instead of t um fighting that nature i decided to embrace that nature which is more intimate experiences for example and i used to feel like oh well i want to you know serve how many people at a time and you know I want to grow and da da, da 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 and then I was like you know what maybe my talent is to serve people and create intimate experiences where they can really feel served mm -hmm. so I pivoted in that way and I'm glad because sometimes we do things that go against our nature as you mentioned earlier and things just don't work or things aren't as prosperous as we would like it to so I was mm -hmm. happy with those changes but I was still burnt out and mm -hmm. but I was happy with the direction but then I realized okay I really need to slow down and then I was burnt out with everything not just business but just the pandemic everything eventually when you're pushing 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 eventually your, your body is going to push back and be like I can't take anymore and that's what happened and then when okay I feel like okay I'm getting back you know, I'm feeling rested. Boom, we're in another lockdown. And it's like, I thought we were coming out of this. Just when you're expecting things to open up, you're telling me I have to go back and sit down. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't process that. And it was really hard. And I was really thankful for the clients that I had at the point in time where I had this space to be flexible, I had this space to be like, I don't feel good today and I just need to lay down. And uh, that's that's what I was going through but then after that I just went through weeks of just wanting to stay in bed and I really started to get worried about my own self like am I gonna come out of this <laughs> yeah so that is when when I finally felt like normal ish I wrote the email because it's like no we can't just be walking around here acting like everything is okay yeah yeah and it was really, I was really happy for the feedback that I got because it also let me know that a lot of people are 
experiencing these things and there's just something about that community of knowing that there are people who understand where I'm going what I'm going through and that was the purpose of me sending out that email to my list Mm -hmm. it was a safe space a private space to just really share what has been happening than that here are some ways and things that I have been using to cope and uh, that's the purpose of today it's not just to go on and on about how hard and rough this period is but also to help share some tips on how you can cope if you are really struggling to show up for yourself in your personal life and in your business because at the end of the day if we are not okay our businesses are not going to be okay we have to Absolutely. first take care of ourselves because a better mm-hmm. us is a better business. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So You're Leslie, I want to ask you, you, you explored the, you know, the struggle of the lockdown. Tell me what are some feelings again that you like expressed and sh- what would you narrow down a couple tips for our listeners of how they can cope? Um. A lot of the feelings I would say would be anxiety. Anxiety is definitely Mm. one because like you said, we don't know when we have an idea that maybe hopefully within X amount of weeks, we may get a little ease up as they like to say, Um, Mm. but we're not sure because we thought that, like you said, we thought that last year too. (laughs) So there is no certainty so there's a lot of anxiety which contributes to a lot of stress yeah of course and what I what actually what I went through when I was going through my my down period like you had a down period I had a similar down period and when I was able to actually vent about it I realized I was just angry I was angry yes I did go (laughs) through that I was just really angry and I being able to actually label it and say it out loud was very was a good release for me right like I guess kind of similar to how you know writing the email was for you but I just needed to be able to say it out loud I am angry I'm angry at a host of different things but so I think the main ones are the anxiety the stress and a lot of people have anger a lot of people have sadness that they're dealing with. And I think for me, some of the tips that have helped me was definitely reach out to someone is the first one. You, we have this idea that we're supposed to be superheroes and figure everything out by ourselves. And, you know, and we if, don't want to burden other people. You think you're burdening other people and which is actually one of the reasons why I offered, um, I offered uh, an hour free coaching to anyone who f- felt that they needed um, some support, some extra support f- um, in, from the mindset point of view. And, right. you know, it's about not bottling up your feelings or trying to push mm. them aside or act like, because a lot of the times, a lot of the messages you've been getting especially if you keep scrolling social media is that you're not supposed to be upset about this they're trying to save our lives so (laughs) so you're not allowed to be upset (laughs) which i actually experienced that just two days ago and i didn't say a word i just shared something that echoed those sentiments Mm -hmm. and because i related to it and Mm -hmm. I honestly don't like the fact that we even feel like we have to, like you said, we can't sh- share how we really feel. We can't be upset or we can't question anything or um, yeah. Like we just shouldn't complain as I was yeah. told as they responded in my comments. And I find that was so odd because this is people's real life experiences and we really shouldn't invalidate that if someone feels upset if someone feels sad give them that space to do that who does it hurt everybody copes differently if you feel fine great for you yeah absolutely yep and that's the thing We, we, we need to allow people to feel what they feel let them feel their feelings process them and just accept them because when you try to push your feelings aside or bury them or act like they don't exist, 
that is actually when you you lose your connection with your higher level functioning. You actually stop thinking logically and critically because you're not allowing yourself the space to say, okay, I am mad, I am sad, I am, you know, whatever emotion it is. So mm. you have to allow yourself to feel the emotions and not bottle it up so that you can continue to have access to just the thinking logically, which will lead me to my second tip, which is mind what you consume. Mm. And this is not just for COVID. This is just generally mind what you consume. If you, I've had, I've seen people say they keep refreshing the, the, the ministry of health page to see, I'm like, how is this helping or serving you in any way? You're adding, you <laughs> deliberately adding to your anxiety by seeing who is the next person who has died or how many new cases they are, you know, keep yourself. I'm not saying to, to bury your head in the sand and act like, you know, nothing and is act going like on. It doesn't happen. Yeah. You know, but keep yourself so, informed with one or two reputable sites. And, but mm -hmm. you know, you don't have to sit down watching every day, the ticker going back up and, and how many new cases and everything like that. It's, it's not healthy. It's not helpful. Oh my goodness. So I have a, a, a bunch of things going through my mind that I wouldn't touch on just yet, or maybe not at all, because it's mm -hmm. not really relevant and I'll just be venting. But um, <laughs> the aspect of the consumption of this information as it relates to COVID, you kind of start to hype or focus on it. And mm -hmm. I get it because I want to, I wanted to like add some perspective, like when things now happen or when they, you know, you go from one extreme, which is somewhat a lot of freedom that we had pre um pre april month then right yeah and then yes, week. it the week after it's like mm -hmm. every two days boom 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 and it's just it's like tightening of restrictions that just kept coming and coming like you can't help but just like you feel like the sky is falling and you want to know what's happening and you want to know and you want to know and you want to, you keep focusing and that happens when it, it's now happening, which also happened last year when, you know, schools were, you sent you home, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And I get it, but then you have to also realize when what you're doing isn't making sense and you kind of have to stop yourself. And it really does take a lot of self-awareness because unless there's somebody externally telling you stop, when are you going to personally realize, hey, I need to stop? Yeah. And I realized I was like glued to, to my iPad. And I was only like refreshing and looking to see what people are saying and what they're posting and what new information. And I was like, what is, what is this? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> I was like, this doesn't make any sense. We have to sit down with these restrictions for weeks. So this is not a good use of my time. So you know what? It's time to stop. Nothing is going to change much in the next 24 hours. So let me put this down and just kind of detach from all of this information and all, all of the discussions because you, you, you start to get consumed by it and it really makes Absolutely. you unwell. And yeah, so I just say that to like agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. When you keep going, you look at one video and then you it suggests another and it's another and you end up going down this rabbit hole and then you're looking at these conspiracy theories that have absolutely nothing to do with anything <laughs> logical that you, but then there are so many um google doctors out there now everyone is an expert mm. and hearing people like saying well my uncle said this that is your uncle an actual medical expert no okay let's actually pay attention to the medical experts please. <laughs> and it, so it, yeah. it's, it's mind what you consume like i said find one or two sites who site is perfect if you want to get like all the the information uh, the ministry site is good if, if you want to get information but other than that you really don't need to be looking at a hundred different youtube um videos or who posted what on Facebook or wherever and one yeah. then might so that would lead to my other um tip which is figuring out how to reframe the experience 
and this is not again it's not about burying your head in the sand or acting like oh this oh, nothing is wrong we're okay but it's not helpful it's not serving you to think oh my god i'm stuck at home i don't know what to do because i right. mean like you like you know i started i started my business at the beginning of this pandemic <laughs> and i spent those first three months being like okay well i'll just i'll just enjoy the three months home and then i'll get everything going and then well we see and then you actually realize oh this is gonna be longer than i thought this is gonna be longer so let me actually use this time i'm being given all this time and space to actually work on myself work on my business and that's when i hired you i hired my own personal coach also and you know to work on everything and get myself to a, a, a point where I'm like, okay, yeah. Because regardless of how long we're in lockdown, it's going to end. And when it ends, do you have a plan? I love that. Now, now you've been given a time to make your, make your long-term plan, make your short-term plan. What is your plan for retirement? Do you want to accomplish something? Do you want to learn a new skill? You want to... Anything you want to do, you're being, you've been given the time right now to focus on yourself or your mm. family. So instead of just sitting down being like, woe is me and drinking your life away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not saying don't take a drink now and then because I certainly do. But, <laughs> but you that's know, a good one. You know, use, use, use the time to actually develop yourself because when we come out of this, we're going to need so many things. So many people are going to need different support systems and learn how to just take care of themselves because if heaven forbid we ever have to go through something like this again, I'm pretty sure most of us don't want to be in a similar situation that we found ourselves in. So now mm. will be the time to evaluate like okay this is what i didn't like about this how could i possibly change how this could I, I if this happened again how can i have like a better experience of it like where Absolutely. would i rather be yeah you know or mm -hmm. what should i have in place that was causing me worry the last pandemic Absolutely. you know yeah yeah that's really good questions because i was having a, a conversation with a colleague and he asked me you know like i hope this gave people a lot of people gave people a lot of thought on like what are you going to do to prepare yourself if something like this ever happened again and I didn't actually give that much thought so directly even though I did subconsciously I was like I was like what do you mean and when he clarified I understood I was like oh yes I, I did think about that yeah. you know like what do I want to have in place mm -hmm. I just didn't have it like framed in that way Mm -hmm. and uh, I just really feel like for at least for me personally it really it's like you're on a timeout and if you you were put to sit down and really think about do I like how my life is going not that it's yeah. bad but maybe yeah. you haven't been living enough maybe you haven't been taking enough risk on the things that you really wanted to do and now mm -hmm. that we are like restricted from really making moves on anything you start mm -hmm. to wonder okay you know, I was like wasting time because life really is short and it really makes you look around and be like, wow, life is short and we really should seize every moment. And, you know, we could, every bit of advice, this can apply to business and personal because maybe there's a Absolutely. business idea you wanted to pursue or maybe there's somewhere that you wanted to go or experiences mm -hmm. you wanted to fulfill. And mm -hmm. yeah, I just... I think those are some of the things I could sit and have a little bit of gratitude for is that it's a wake up call. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because I know a lot of people are famous for saying things like, oh, well, when I get to this certain level, then I would try to do this. So when I when we always I, put things off, we put it off because we think, oh, we always have time. But right. this pandemic has definitely shown us, no, you don't have time. The time is now. What it is you want to do, where it is you want to go, who it is you want to be, the time is now to become that person. Right. Yeah. Um, one of the other things that um, Tipset has helped me is keeping a routine. 
I know. Oh gosh, when... you read my mind. I was actually gonna bring it up if you didn't. But yeah, <laughs> run with it. Routine. Yeah, let's keep, hear keep it. A, keep a routine. You know, it's very, it's very tempting to just be like, oh, I'll sleep till noon and I'll do whatever <laughs> and I'll just. There's no purpose. Yeah. Like, what's no the purpose. urgency? What's the urgency to wake up? But no, actually, keeping a routine actually helps you to focus yourself and actually feel like okay I'm getting things accomplished I'm and I think it was actually you posted about um getting getting up and get dressed (laughs) even though um we're home and I know I myself was guilty of that because I'm like still one o'clock in the afternoon in my pajamas I'm doing no I shared that (laughs) I shared I shared that advice and let me tell you there are many things that I'm using to cope but it doesn't it's not a perfect line Mm-hmm. You know, it's not this perfect mm-hmm. p- line of like, okay, I'm, I'm doing this f- for the past how many weeks consistently. No, it goes in waves. It goes yeah. up and down. I yeah. fall off and I fall back into a slump and I get back on and I, I continue. And yeah. uh, I'll let you finish. I'll actually share what my tip is from a routine perspective. Yeah. But I fell off and then I, I get back on. So yeah. I'll share mine, but you go back. <laughs> But the thing is, if you, even if you fall off, that's okay. The, the important thing is to actually not judge yourself about falling off or make yourself feel bad like, oh, oh I, I'm a horrible person for not keeping up this routine. Because like we said in the beginning, you're human and right. it's normal. You, you, you have good days and you have bad days. It's you, no, nobody, not even us coaches or even therapists or anybody, even the gurus have bad days it's just that we actually have um the tools that we need to maybe not wallow in the bad days right but it's okay to have a bad day and you 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 know for yourself when you actually do need to take the time off and just be like okay i really can't push myself anymore i need to take some time off but be it like a couple hours be it a couple days it doesn't matter everybody is different but and I'm not saying this that people are supposed to be like okay well they said I should relax more so I'm going to not finish my project (laughs) this is not an excuse to be lazy (laughs) but you know when you need the time for yourself I think what it is, it's about knowing to get in tune with yourself to know what mm-hmm. you need and when. Mm-hmm. Like you have to yeah. strike a balance between giving yourself grace and then keeping yourself accountable to commitment. And that's where it really takes practice. You're not going to always get it right, but it mm-hmm. takes practice and it will take time for you to develop that muscle because that's something between you. The point is people like myself, yourself, um, therapists, et cetera, give you tools, but it's now for you to integrate that with yeah. your intuition and what Absolutely. you think is right for you in that moment. So like okay. what might be right for you yesterday might not be right for you next week. Maybe last week you needed to rest, but next week you need to kind of push through and get that responsibility done. Absolutely. Sometimes you might have to know when, I need to reschedule versus I need to push through. And only you could know what that is. Absolutely. And in fact, that actually leads to you knowing your own boundaries. Because sometimes, as I I know a lot of my friends who still work in the corporate world, they were talking about their bosses have them doing meetings at eight o'clock in the night and like no you have to have boundaries <laughs> that's not a thing you have to have a cutoff time for your work the same way you would have a cutoff time if you were going into an office there's a cutoff time even though you're home right and and the cutoff time is not just for the office it's for yourself too and even it could go as far as having boundaries like not eating in your bed and and you know eat at your table eat, instead of eating in your bed that's part of keeping your routine or not doing your work on your sofa so Go, here's the have, thing with that specific right? <laughs> so, to reiterate my point of knowing what you need and what's right for you mm-hmm. is that it has always been my rule as a work 
from home business or I should say online business, right? My office is at home Mm -hmm. and I have a designated space. Mm -hmm. But because I was so demotivated, it actually felt kind of depressing to open the door and come in here. For some reason, I just wasn't feeling the space. Yeah. And I have been full time for like four years and I have never, I wouldn't say never, but for the for ninety percent of it, ninety five, I don't work from my bedroom. That that had right. to be like a non negotiable. I needed to keep work outside of my bedroom. Mm-hmm. The only time my desk was in my bedroom is when I was doing stuff in here, and I just wanted a safe space away from my children to leave my things, have my desk, have my my stuff. Yeah. But that's a no no for me. But when I realized I went down in this slump, that was my comfort to the point where I got one of those like laptop desk for the bed and I yeah. work from the, that that's working for me and I know I'll, right. I'll get back here when when the time is right when because that's not right, yeah. that's mm-hmm. that's my rule that's my mm-hmm. boundary but mm-hmm. I know that's what I need to get through this space right now right so now. yeah mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. you know absolutely and it's good that you you know what you need to be able to continue on your path a lot of people would be like that is like it actually works for you because you got the little desk and everything and some people would try to do the same thing and they would not be able to be productive so that's where Mm -hmm. uh, actually knowing yourself and knowing your boundaries actually comes in in handy Mm -hmm. knowing who you are as a person I know that if I go go um, downstairs where my kids are and have the um everyone's on their their tablets and it's loud and I'm not getting anything done and then it's going to be like okay let me go cook something and then and so I know when I need to get stuff done I need to keep myself in my in my corner so to speak right (laughs) not uh, not actually a corner but so that I can get my productivity done and then Go, and like I said, have that cutoff time because I've realized even for myself, if I don't have, a, if I don't set a specific cutoff time, I could be working ten o'clock in the night still doing stuff. <laughs> and mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so definitely keep your boundaries, keep your routines, and try to get as much sleep as possible. I know my circadian rhythm has been completely thrown off for these lockdowns. So I'm sleeping at really randomly weird hours, but I know it will come back when we get a little more um, normal open normalcy. <laughs> so the last, so, um, yeah. Oh, so before you move on to your last tip, um, I want to keep it on theme. So yeah. I'll share my my routine tip. So Mm -hmm. I did some self-reflection and I realized, okay, what is the point of when I open my in the morning that I go down this slippery slope of anxiety, depression, hopelessness? What's the point? Why why does this matter anymore right now, (laughs) right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I realized that I need to have a morning routine. But sometimes we have this morning routine that's so elaborate that even that feels like it's too much, yeah. right? I am, I, I'm big on morning routines. Even before the pandemic, I love to yeah. watch morning routine videos. It's so inspiring. It makes me feel productive. Mm-hmm. And I have had many various morning routines, which I actually plan to do an episode just around morning routines. And one of the things that I was like, okay, this is the whole elaborate half an hour morning routine. I don't know why we made a morning routine such a big elaborate event, but it's like, okay, what is like a minimal morning routine? What is something that's very low maintenance? Because when we are struggling to, to embark on a, any task, when mm-hmm. we are just looking at the whole many different steps, it feels overwhelming. So when you're there, and you're thinking, oh, I have to do this, 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 this. It feels like too much. I told myself, okay, Cassia, what's that one trigger to just get the momentum going? And what I realized is I need to get out of bed ASAP and just head to the bathroom and wash my face, mm-hmm. even if I don't bathe right away. Mm-hmm. Wash my face and just do my, like, you know, moisturize my skin, da 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 
then you know move on to the coffee and the breakfast but if i start to think about oh i have to go and make breakfast for the kids and i have to do this i was like oh god yeah you know that's what happens to me i feel like oh god but morning routines is more about self-care i would say like you have to fill yourself up first Mm -hmm. and that's what i try to focus on what would make me feel that little jolt of like okay i feel like good and that is just Mm -hmm. to simply get there and wash my face put on a headspace um i don't know if you if you don't know i will link in the show notes but the headspace app or some kind of motivational something for some people that would be you know prayer meditation journaling i love to do all of those things too but i wanted to have like a simple three step what are these three things then you could branch out and have the more elaborate things that you want as Mm -hmm. bonuses or additional but my tip would be have like just like what are three simple things that you could do in the morning to just get you out of bed and get you going so that you don't stay there for hours and hours going down the slippery slope of anxiety depression and hopelessness like what's the freaking point absolutely it's a hundred percent and that's actually one of the things that I work with clients to make sure that everybody starts getting a morning routine because it's necessary for you to start your day like you said filling yourself it up sets first. the you tone it sets, it sets the, tone. the tone fill yourself up first you cannot pour from an empty cup so like part of my morning routine is when I wake up I will do like 10 minutes of meditation then I will do some journaling about um, my goals for the week and possibilities and different things like that and before I get into you know online class with the kids and blah 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 because you know once you get that part going like you said the whole making sure that they have it becomes a lot easier yeah you know your mind is not going to go back to okay i need to meditate and i need to journal no your mind your mind is already on on autopilot going (laughs) a hundred miles an hour so if you can carve out space in the morning as as soon as you wake just a f- up a 10 15 minutes 10, 15 minutes it doesn't have to like you said it doesn't have to be this long elaborate tra la la because uh, i mean it it's nice to have the long elaborate stuff but when you can you know, when you can but you know be keep it efficient what like you said whatever works for you meditation and the journaling works for me you said you know washing your face and and getting your skincare going it works for you and everybody will have something different that works for them figure out what works for you that you can do within the, the 15 minutes and right. for me even trying to um, I like to listen to podcasts so instead of like sitting down and, and carving out time to listen to them I actually just listen to them while I'm in the shower and getting myself ready and stuff so it kind of t- uh, knocks two birds out with one stone so that's also a possibility for anybody. I, I realize I, um, some people are like, well, I don't have time. Well, okay, what are you doing while you're showering? Nothing. Okay, listen to something then, you know. Right. So you, you can always figure out having time for your routine for yourself. Because if you don't have time for yourself, how are you going to give time to others? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How are you going to pour into anyone else, you know, your job um, your clients, your kids, your sister, your mom, you know, your significant other, you first have to like say about you. Yeah. And this actually was a perfect lead up to my last tip, which was self care. You know, some, like we said earlier, sometimes you just need to shut off. If, if it's like, okay, I need to stop looking at the computer for, for, for an hour or I need to just go go outside, walk outside barefooted, ground yourself, take some alone time, allow your kids to have alone time because a lot of us think that, oh, the kids are fine. The kids aren't fine. <laughs> you know, the kids need just the same way we need our, our alone time to process what we're going through. The kids need the same alone time to uh, process what they are going through. So allow, allow for them to have their space. And also see as much as how much you can actually get them like involved with the the other parts of their family meaning like well my kids just have like their grandparents 
and you know it's they they love seeing their grandparents but of course you know it's a taboo to let them see their grandparents or whatever so it just even if it's just a simple family zoom call right uh, uh, once a week where they can be like hey how you going and catch up and so keep them involved in in like family life that oh no no nobody has Find abandoned. ways for them to interact with the outside world as much yeah. as possible yeah. while being it's yeah. it's it's really and the thing as, as a parent it's really sad to watch because like I had the, the air condition repair people come a couple of weeks ago um before the extreme lockdown and mm. they one of them brought their daughter with with them and my six-year-old was ready to go hug the girl you know like oh my god you're my friend <laughs> you know? and it's, it's so sad to watch them go through this and especially especially at, like I have a six-year-old and I have an 18 year old and I mean while the 18 year old isn't having the best time either you know she can cope a little better than the six-year-old and you know right. I have to, every time online school ends and on the friends log off I have to sit with her while she cries because my friends are gone. I have no friends, you know. So it's really you really I, and to I be have able to deal with that. To be able to deal with that, you definitely have to to pour into yourself. Fill yourself first. up, yeah. Because it, it takes a toll on us, especially as mompreneurs. Like we have mm-hmm. to balance the business, mm-hmm. making sure that the business is still coming along and pushing the needle forward. But then yes. it's like, I have a responsibility as a mom to my kids. Like, absolutely. Sometimes absolutely. you just kind of have to prioritize, and sometimes the business isn't the priority. And I yeah. think that's also an important message that, mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. tough as that is to share, we have to take some kind of solace that it will pick back up afterwards. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But easier said than done, especially of when course. you need it to, to be moving right now. Mm-hmm. But I think that does bring some comfort to some of us because we feel like, oh my gosh, it's ending. It's the end of the world, but it will yeah. pick back up. People will be in demand for things as they are ready to like, hey, I, I, I want to go. I want to I want to get I, this. I, I need this to do this. Going. I need to be, be And better. people will, <laughs> you will be surprised that people just start reaching out when they just, mm-hmm. they just know that life has settled a bit i think people put a lot of things on pause too because even though they might be able to transact online because things are uncertain they are just on pause it doesn't mean it's no it just means not right now not right now yes yeah absolutely absolutely and thing is we know that it's going to end and when it actually does come to an end or is coming to an end, there's a whole new set of anxieties that's going to come up. That with comes people. with that. Yeah. <laughs> people, people think that, oh, when it ends, we're just going to be like, oh, yes, party in the streets. But no, they, you're actually going to have to brace yourself for a whole different level of anxiety. Adjust. How to readjust to just being out with other people. And I know people will say, well, I go to the grocery. And it, no, it's not the same. It's not the same when you could just have that freedom of movement and like I know even for myself I'm I'm already planning trips <laughs> and I'm like I told my brother um you're gonna see me for about three months I hope you can handle it right <laughs> so, I love that I love it I have a similar mindset like I don't really care what's going on here you know I I don't I yeah I I need to like yeah. detach mm-hmm. for a while but mm-hmm absolutely absolutely (laughs) absolutely so it's it's going to be a lot of anxiety going back into public places and because people are going to be like oh my god what if there's a resurgence and you know what about the job market and all that so I would like people to know that anticipate that those anxieties are going to come you might not think that you're going to have them because you know maybe you haven't been one of those who lost their jobs or anything like that but you'll be surprised at when it happens the thoughts that are going to come to your to your to your mind so you know just just be be wary of the fact that you're going to have a whole different new level of anxiety to deal with when we go back to being normal (laughs) normal yeah Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. I honestly think that's even a whole other topic by itself. Absolutely. <laughs> it is a whole other topic um, that maybe we could explore another time. Maybe as yeah. it gets closer mm-hmm. to that, mm-hmm. we could you know, talk about that too. But mm-hmm. definitely we also have to use this detention time as we sit and we re- evaluate our lives and prepare and you know put yep. things in place that we yep. also mentally prepare for that transition back mm-hmm. to you know that new normal because it's yep. definitely not going to be the world that we experienced pre-pandemic yep. and i think yep. a lot of what's to come is going to be a struggle of trying to get back to the old thing when you as an individual have, have a whole new perspective and you're a changed person yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh- so we lost Leslie there coming down to the end of the episode, but that was it. That was all of the tips that we had to share. And regardless of when you're listening to this, you know, a year after the pandemic, six months after, three months after, life might be pretty much normal on your side of the world. The fact is there will be times in your life and in business when you have highs and lows and you really start to question, oh my gosh, is this it? Do I really want to continue doing X? Is this the end for me? You know, you might really question what's the point anymore of whatever it is you're trying to pursue in life, whether that's business, school, um, whatever it is. And I hope that this gave you some some comfort and some reassurance that uh, it will come to an end whatever your trial and tribulation is at this time you might be grieving you know a loved one's death like grief does not just have to be death as we explored in this episode and regardless of what type of grief you might be dealing with in your life I hope That amongst all of the hustle, hustle content that's out there, even the content that I put out about taking action and doing this and doing that, I hope that this helped you in whatever season of discouragement that you might be in and gave you something, some tools that you can work with to help you push through and come out on the other side stronger and better. All right, so... I will link to how you can connect with Leslie. All of it is in the show notes to learn more about her. Um, You could find her on her website at lesliebradshaw.com. You can also find her on Instagram. Like I said, I will link to all of her stuff, any goodies that she will share with us. Everything is in the show notes, so be sure to check that out. And I look forward to chatting with you guys again soon on the next episode.